Hello, I'm Christine Pricino, an AARP New Jersey volunteer, and welcome to Fraud Friday Facebook Live. This week is Identity Theft Awareness Week, and a good time to hear how we can protect ourselves and our loved ones from this type of fraud. And with Valentine's Day coming up, even Cupid can be a con. So we'll also talk about romance scams. To discuss these topics, we are joined by Bridget Small, a writer, educator, and speaker in the Federal Trade Commission's Division of Consumer and Business Education. The FTC's mission is protecting customer, consumers by preventing anti-competitive, deceptive, and unfair business practices through law enforcement, advocacy, and education. Bridget's work has centered on fraud prevention, education, and research related to older adults for almost 30 years, including 18 years at AARP. If you have a question today about identity theft or romance scams, please type it in the chat and we will do our best to get to it live. We're looking forward to a great conversation. Welcome, Bridget, and thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Christine. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, uh, Bridget, identity theft can ruin people's finances, credit history, and can be a huge headache to resolve. How can we protect ourselves from identity theft? Well, that's a really important question, Christine. And before I get started, I want to let you know that the things I say here today are things that I'm saying as a staff member at the FTC. They don't represent the opinions of the FTC commissioners, any individual person, or the commission as a whole. So let's talk about identity theft and how we can protect ourselves and avoid problems. The thing you want to think about is where your important information is your financial information, your personal identifying information, and what you can do about this. You've heard some of these things before, but it's always good to review. You know, to start, protect your mail, bring it in when it arrives, and shred what's going out. Don't put your outgoing bills that include your checks and your personal information, like your credit card statements, in your mailbox waiting to be picked up. Put those inside a secure, closed mailbox. Don't carry your social security card or share your number with anyone who calls, even if they make it sound urgent. People who need your social security number are gonna be people you see in person. Protect your information over the phone, online and by text. If someone contacts you and asks for personal information and you re really aren't sure who they are, hang up, contact them from a number or a website, you look up yourself. If you get an urgent text about your account being overspent or about to be closed, stop. Take a moment, check your account before you click on text or agree to anything. That's a very standard tactic of a fraudster trying to grab your information before you can think. If you get an email from a business you have an account with, don't click on that link if you don't expect that email or something doesn't seem right. It could be from an imposter fishing for your personal information or your financial information. If your bank says, if it looks like an, a message from your bank that says there's a problem with your account, stop. Contact your bank yourself. See if there really is a problem. Ask to confirm that information before you click on a link that could take you to a fraudulent site and get you to log on and steal your account information. You know, sometimes we can't protect our information uh, being exposed, like in a data breach. So we need to know how to spot identity theft, you know, if it does happen. Bridget, those are great tips. Um, and always good to hear them over and over again. Unfortunately, a, a sobering reality in our online world is that many entities already have our personal information, credit card, mm -hmm. bank account numbers, our social security numbers, and health-related information. Right. And data breaches have shown that and exposed that. How can someone spot if they have been a victim of identity theft? Well, something you can do if you're concerned that you might have been a victim or if you've gotten a notification of a data breach is to check your credit report. You can get your report for free at annualcreditreport.com. Go through your report and look for accounts 
that are listed that you didn't open or credit inquiries you don't recognize. If there's a new credit card, a personal loan, or a car loan, that will show up as a new account. If there's a new cell phone plan or a utility service like water, gas, or electric, mm -hmm. that will show up as a credit inquiry. Of course, check your credit card and bank statements when you get them. Bridget, I just want to back up to the credit reports. Sure. Um, on that website that you mentioned, annualcreditreport.com, yes. I think it is. I, I understand the credit reports are now during the pandemic free. And That's right. you can ac actually access them weekly on yes. for free. So That's I just true. want to. Yeah, you are absolutely right. You're so on top of this. They are, <laughs> <laughs> they're free until April. They're free weekly. Um, so, you know, jump on that. Get your credit report see what's going on. And you're absolutely right. They're free until April 22nd, uh, April, 2022, all those 22. <laughs> Thank you. It, it's a dot com, but it's not a commercial site. That is the URL annualcreditreport.com. Get your free credit report. Look at it closely. If anything's not right, there's a process you can go through to make, of course, if you spot any fraud, there's a process for that. If you spot any other problems like wrong addresses, you know, people's mixed up information of yours, there's a process for correcting that. But let's talk about if you spot identity theft, some other things to do. Check your credit card, check your statements when you get them, if you're still getting them by mail. Think about getting an online account so you can look at things a little more frequently look for purchases or withdrawals you didn't make. Of course, if you ever get a notice from the IRS that another tax return has been filed in your name, that could be a sign that someone used your information and filed tax returns. So that's tax identity theft. If you got a notice that someone uh, earned income in your name, that's another sign of tax identity theft. Look at your medical bills, your explanation of benefits. There's a chance, if there's a chance that someone got medical services with your information, that's a sign of medical identity theft. Okay, actually we have a comment also from um, sure. one of our viewers, um, from Laura. She said that one of her checks was quote, washed last week and forged for thousands of dollars. Oh dear. She said, take your mail inside the post office, especially if it's checks, you know, or something of value, so. Yes, that, that was the comment. But again, that's definitely true. And you alluded that before. I did. Yeah. It's it's unfortunate, but you really, you know, it's it's much better. It's it's not a good idea to leave your outgoing mail, you know, uh, clipped mm -hmm. to your mailbox or or putting the flag up. That's something people may have done in the past. Not a good idea mm -hmm. anymore. One of the things that um, also going back to the credit reports and what sure. you see is being able to put credit freezes or alerts yes. on, uh, on your credit. Um, so can you talk a little bit about that? The the freezes and alerts? Yes. yes. So that's something you can do. There are a couple things you can do. In the context of um, if you know you're, there has been a problem with your account, with mm -hmm. any of your accounts, the first thing you want to do is to call the company where you know the fraud occurred. Close that account. Uh, you know, maybe change, the, maybe close the account. Certainly contact the company. Mm -hmm. Close the account if you need to change the password, okay? Place a fraud alert on your credit report. A fraud alert means that the credit reporting companies won't give new credit in your name until they contact you. They will give credit, but they won't give it until they contact you. Mm -hmm. If you place a credit freeze, they won't give credit. They freeze your credit if with your cooperation, you have to request a credit freeze, a freeze is placed on your credit, then you have to request to have the freeze lifted if you want right. to get new credit. You can still get new credit. It doesn't prevent, it doesn't stop the credit that you currently have or affect right. any of your current credit, but that's something you can do. Let's right. go back to if you spot identity theft, you would contact the companies where the fraud occurred you could place a fraud alert or freeze on your credit, depending on your choice. Mm -hmm. You'd get your credit report if you don't have it already. Start checking your credit report for those signs that we talked about of any problems. Then you need to go, or I can't say need, 
it's best to go to re report what's going on. Identitytheft.gov is the federal government website. It's a central, secure place to go to report identity theft. You can give the information about what's happened to you and generate an identity theft report, which triggers certain rights to help you in recovering from identity theft. Because when you have that report, you can send letters to creditors, to anyone who's suggesting you have a debt with them, to the credit reporting company, to businesses if you need to get records, mm -hmm. and you are entitled to get information that will help you recover from the theft. And when you report at identitytheft.gov and enter the information for the businesses where you've had problems, right. or the accounts where there have been transactions, you get a personalized recovery plan that helps you keep track of what you have done, who you have contacted, where you have sent letters, mm -hmm. when to expect replies, so you can return and just keep track of this process that you're going through to recover and get information. Wow, so that sounds like a great action to take. I, that's something I learned, identitytheft.gov. Theft. Yes. Right. That's part of the FTC, I guess. Yeah, the FTC, yes, manages the site. It's a, it's the federal government website. It's available in English and Spanish. I'm, I don't have the Spanish um, with me. I can provide that mm -hmm. at the end so that we can provide that to the members. But in English, it's identitytheft.gov. It is Great. also available in Spanish. Great. And yeah. may, may I add one Go more? Go ahead. Thing? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. If you're a tax identity theft victim, when you go to identitytheft.gov, it's the only place you can report directly electronically to the IRS. Okay. Otherwise, you have to go through the whole paperwork, right? business of reporting to the IRS. If you go to identitytheft.gov, you can file directly electronically to the IRS. Good to know. Very it's full good. of information, too, if you're, yes. if you're not a victim. <laughs> Okay, I, I want to remind our viewers, if you have a question for Bridget, please write it in the comments section and we will do our best to take your question live or comments. Bridget, um, yes. moving on to romance scams. Whether using a dating app or somewhere else on the internet, online relationships are more common than ever. And with that, romance scams occur often as well. In addition to the possible monetary toll, the emotional, the emotional toll can be great. Can you tell us a little bit about romance scams? What are the red flags? Sure. Some of the, the red flags are these, you know, people suddenly requesting um, a relationship with you. You may be on a dating site. You may be on a social media site or a game site. Uh, we've heard from a lot of people who said, I wasn't looking for a romance. I was playing a word game. I was playing a puzzle game. Mm -hmm. This person befriended me and said, hey, I like puzzles. You like puzzles. Right. You know, let's get married. I mean, just wild, you know, out of left field things. Yeah. Um, the person may say, I'm from your area, but I'm in this faraway land um, doing business. I'm in the military. I'm on an oil rig. Uh, I'm a doctor with the UN. Um, and I'm having a terrible trouble. And I really need your financial help. I'm a terribly rich person. Uh, mm -hmm. And, but I, I definitely need your financial help and I need it uh, right away. Uh, there's a big rush of emotion and then a big push for money. Those are some of the red flags. Mm -hmm. Very good, good to know. Romance scammers often ask their partners to send money. Yes. What reasons do they give for needing money and how do they ask partners to pay? Well, this is when it gets really dangerous. They um, quickly, try and develop this emotional bond mm -hmm. and then suggest, um, you know, through their elaborate storytelling that they need money for uh, their business, uh, for their personal emergency. Um, they may create this string of uh, wild emergencies. They were, you know, hit by a taxi on their way to the hospital for their emergency surgery for their, you know, cousin, and they need money for each of these steps. Um, they may be on an oil rig where something blew up and they need money for an emergency helicopter to fly them away. Um, they're just problem after problem after problem where they need money and they need it sent urgently. And they, they twist the emotional connection that they develop 
um, or tried to develop with this person saying, you know, you're, you're the only one I've got. I'm counting on you. Please help me. It's terribly important. And they press the person to send them money by gift card, mm -hmm. a wire transfer, or uh, reload cards. Those are ways that money disappears quickly and can't be traced. Right. So right. if the person sends money that way, it's gone. As soon as you tell someone the code from the back of a gift card, that money right. disappears. It goes into the scammer's hand and it can't be recovered. So mm -hmm. it, it's really important. If you suspect if something doesn't feel right, stop talking to that person and talk to someone you trust. Mm -hmm. You know, And pay attention if your friend or family member is concerned, concerned about that. It's, it's really good. Get another opinion. Don't transfer money from your bank account. Don't buy gift cards or, or wire money to someone. You're just you're just not going to get it back. And if what the person is telling you sounds really odd, you know, an underwater welder on the platform in Scotland, mm -hmm. search online. Yeah, you're going to find information from other people who have experienced these things. The U.S. Yeah. Army has lots of information about what soldiers really go through, and it's it's not what the scammers are telling you. Yeah. No, you're so right. You know, be cynical. Talk to your friends and families, and you know, just get that input and feedback to help your breath. You. Yes, breathe. <laughs> okay, a lot of good information here today. And um, before we wrap up our our discussion, Bridget, do you have any final thoughts you'd like to share with our viewers? Well, I I you know so much appreciate the chance to talk with you, uh, you know, to share this information. I just I do want to encourage people to. Look at the information the FTC has. We're so happy to share it. And um, do use the resources, identitytheft.gov. And please tell us, the FTC, what you're seeing. Even if you don't, you know, lose money or, mm -hmm. you know, experience any kind of, of loss like that, it's really important to tell us what's happening in your community. The information you provide helps us with investigations, Mm -hmm. with um, bringing cases. That information is shared in a secure database with law enforcement na nationwide at reportfraud.ftc.gov. Again, it's reportfraud.ftc.gov. You can give as much or as little information as you want. You don't need to share personal information. But when you spot things and tell us the law enforcement agencies spot trends. You know that's how we find out ah something is trending in this area. There's a surge in complaints about you know online problems in this area. And that helps us create information and share it out and help people. Right. So your information is invaluable. And thank you so much uh, for inviting me to share this information on behalf of the FTC. Absolutely. What we can do and with our experiences and help others, definitely. And I also encourage our viewers to um, go to annualcreditreport.com and get your free credit report um, before it, um, that free uh, uh, weekly report expires in April uh, 2022. So, okay. Thank you. Bridget, again, for this informative, informative discussion and sharing tips, best practices, and resources with us on identity theft and romance scams. For our viewers, if you're concerned you've been scammed, you can reach a trained volunteer at the AARP Fraud Watch Network helpline at 877-908-3360. Again, that's 877-908-3360. If you like more information and resources on fraud and scams from AARP New Jersey, please visit our website, aarp.org slash njfightsfraud. Again, that's aarp.org slash njfightsfraud. We hope you learned something new today, I definitely have, uh, about how you can stay safe from fraud and scams. Thank you and have a great day.